So we're going to now do the wig for the clown. And you start with the head, and then you also start with the hair. It comes in this beautiful little package, you pull it out. You're gonna need your pair of scissors. Okay, first thing we wanna do on the head is we wanna mark where the wig is going to be laid onto the head so we know where the hair is going to be placed because we're going to put glue along this area. The contact cement. Okay. So we have that all lined up. Now we're going to take this hair, we're going to cut it open. And we cut it open so we can lay it onto the puppet's head. comes with a liner that we're going to cut out as well. The hair is actually, that we're using is a washing mitt for a car. You can use any type of wig, but the one we supply is this. Okay. So you have the hair. Going to lay it onto the head so we can get the hairline. Okay. Start with the contact cement. And if you're going to be using contact cement, do it outside. Don't do it inside because the fumes are pretty strong. You're going to glue it along the front of the head where you had marked it. And because it's contact cement, you want to do the same on the surface of the hair that you're using. So you apply the contact cement onto this surface as well. And after you've applied it, let it sit for about five minutes before you press it into place because that will give you the gluing surface which is considered contact, as in the name contact cement. Okay, so I have the glue along the entire area there and we let it sit for about five minutes. So we've applied the contact cement on both surfaces and now we're going to lay the hair along the line. And we'll get this beautiful line like that. And again, because it is contact cement, you just press it down but then you can remove it and then place it into another location without any problems. And now we're going to continue gluing the rest of the head on the back. There we go. You can see. And same thing on the other surface where the hair is. And again, repeat, let it sit for five minutes. So now we're going to place it down. And then we cut off the excess from the area. Following that line. And again, the contact cement is designed so that you can move the hair into positions before locking it into place. And then you come in and you trim. 
trim the excess. So after about 25 minutes, you'll have your wig in place. It looks that smooth. And the next step we're going to do is put the neck on and place it into the body. So we have this little plastic bag that comes with the neck balls and there are two of them. And what's interesting about these is that there is a convex side and a concave side. And you want to place it so that the concave side is up when you go to put the neck onto the marionette. So you take the cord and push it right through the hole so that the concave side, concave side is going up. And the next one is matching. Same thing. So they're like two cups. So you have this nice movement. And then this cord goes through the body. There's a front and a back. And the back has these screw eyes. You want to make sure that that is facing you when you go to put your cord into the neck hole. And you bring it all the way through and pull it up tight. And then you're going to make a double knot. One, two. So this will allow the marionette's head to move. And you also have the front and the back facing the correct direction. You can always remember the back because it now has the cord coming out of it. And then we're going to go on to the next step, which will be attaching the arms. Now we're going to do the arms. We're going to attach them with the contact cement. So take out your container and bring up your puppet. We're going to apply it directly onto the shoulders. On each side. And then on the top of the inside where the arm attaches on the inside. So as you're looking, this is the right side. This is the inside. You're going to attach it to the inside. And then the same thing on the inside of the left arm. And you're going to let that sit for five minutes. So now we're going to attach the arms. We've applied the contact cement. Right side. Press it and hold it down. Like that. There. And now the left side. Press it. Hold it down. Excellent. So our two arms are now attached, and now let's put on the legs. Start with the rod, and we're going to find three holes, one here, one here, and one on the other side of the pelvis. And you'll need your pliers for this. Okay. First thing is we're going to turn, make a bend in your pair of wires, your rod, at a 90 degree angle. And you're going to slip on the actual left and right leg. And you'll see it's marked. Place 
press that through the hole. And then we're going to bend it again at another right angle. And that makes it so we can slip it right into that hole. Like that. Your other leg goes right through. And this is a chamois. And the reason why we use chamois is so that your leg can have a turn in and out. Again, we bend it at a right angle. Cut off the excess from the, where the hole is, the distance of the hole. And bend it at another right angle. Place it right inside the hole. So you have the two legs, the arms, the hands, all in position. So we have the left and the right, and that's the anatomically correct version, left and right to the puppet. And the hips are just like this, attached, again left and right. So now we're going to apply the tubing. And the tubing is used on this character because he's a balloon blowing clown. And the way that he's able to blow up the balloon is obviously with a tube going up to the puppeteer. We have the hand all set and there's a hole that goes through the hand into the wrist. And we're gonna need a pair of pliers for this. So take your tube and push it through the hole that is in the wrist of the right hand. And then take your pliers and pull the tube out like that. Next thing we're going to do is take some of the masking tape and we're going to wrap it around the tube so that the balloon can be placed on there and it'll hold the balloon in place. And you take off about six inches and you roll the tube, the tape onto the tube like this. And you're doing this with enough pressure that it's creating a nice round attachment. And you keep going with it till you get it out to about a total of three quarters of an inch. Just enough so that you can slip the balloon on. So there's a hole you put the tube through like that it goes right through and then this is how you put the balloon on and then blowing it up from your tube and check to see if any air is coming out Pretty good. It's done just like that. So now we're going to put the costume onto the clown. So you take your tube and make sure that's running along the back of the puppet. And your costume. This is the collar, and this is the body of the costume. This is called a Yama Yama suit. And you'll see that there are legs and arms. And we're going to put the puppet right inside and put the uh, actual 
Velcro straps along the back. There we go. Leg goes down. Arm comes out on this side, and the right arm comes out on this side with the tube. It's running inside. Okay. Run it straight up the back. And now pull the drawstrings on the hands and on the neck. And I put just a simple bow tie. Same with the hands. And don't do the feet yet because we have to apply the string to the knees. And place at the very bottom of the shoe some felt. I'll show that as well. Make sure we have enough length. Good. And we'll put the collar on very last. So we're going to now string the marionette. This is actually the most difficult part of marionette performing and building and creating is the stringing section. Uh, you'll notice that you'll have your string and then you'll also need to have your needle. So thread your needle and we're going to apply the first string to the head on the marionette. So we have the clown head and we have the ear that has a hole running through it and we're going to take the needle and thread and push it through the hole from the back forward and then we're going to tie it off with two granny knots just like that and you're going to measure off approximately 18 inches of, of string and we're going to do the same amount on the other side and then cut the string. The height of your controller and your marionette, the distance, is different for each puppeteer. So you need to find out what is comfortable for you. A typical puppeteer has their arm at a right angle when they're performing it. So if you're taller, you have more string. And if you're shorter, less. Okay, so we got this. Again, through the needle. And now we'll do it on the other side with the other ear. Hole. Needle. Two granny knots. One. Two. Okay. So this will give you the approximate height of the marionette. And I'm going to now cut this string in half. Okay. Now on the main controller, there are two holes on this side and on this side. This is called the head bar. The main controller here is where your hand controls the controller and your head strings are going to be going right up onto the left and the right side. So place the string into the one hole and then down the other side and then tie it with a granny knot. Two granny knots. And then we do the same on the other side and out the other. And we check the balance of the head. Even 
check the level of balance to see if it's level. See I'm moving the head. And tie it off. Okay. So again, I feel that I mean, this is a height. For a taller puppeteer, you'll see the height. This is very, very tall. We're going to make it that length. Yours can come down literally down another six inches from there. And now we're going to apply the shoulder strings. So we find the screw eye there. And we push the needle through with the string, and then we tie it off with two grannies. Good. And measure it up to where the shoulder is going to be. And a little bit more. And now we're going to do the other side. Then we find the other screw eye and do the same thing. Push the needle through and tie it off with a granny knot twice. Make those the same length. And cut it. Okay. Now we're going to put it through the two holes that are in the middle of the controller. There are two holes. And one goes on one side. and goes up to the top of the controller. And the other one goes on the other side. Good. Now we don't know how much tension there's going to be yet. So we're going to just put a regular knot because we can change it, we can slip it up and down. But we don't know how much, we just put it towards the end. And then we look at it, feel when this is going to be level and when it picks up some of the weight off of the shoulders. So it needs to go about there, okay? So now I will pull the string down. Good. And put another knot in there. See, it's a little bit too tight, so we're going to bring it up a little bit. And I keep adjusting the string until it's just right. That's about right. Let's make it a little bit shorter. Good. And once it's the right length in the shoulders, we then put a double knot on it. And that'll make it so that it doesn't move anymore. Good. And then you cut off the excess string. That puts us there, the shoulders. So you have the head movement left and right, and then the shoulders will pull the head down. And now we're going to string the hands. So. Place the puppet up on the controller bar, and then we're going to string the left and the right hand. So we have the hand, and we have the hole right here, and we're going to place the string through the hole, through the other side, and tie it off with a granny knot. Okay, the string's going to go up to the top of the controller to another hand, to its right hand, in one string. So make that length longer than what you'll need for the two hands to run through, and you place it from the left hand 
up through this hole, through the hole, down to the other hand. And there are two holes here, and you'll want to place it at the hole that's in the front of the hand. Push it through, and tie it off with a double granny knot as well. So that is how you're able to manipulate both hands with one string. Now we're going to add a specialty string that is designed to lift the hand up to his mouth. And that is you place the string through the hole, the second hole, on the right hand, and tie it again with a granny knot. Again, enough string that it runs from the top from the bottom of the hand up to the top of the controller. So the string is coming from the right hand through the needle, up through the nose, because there's a hole in his nose. To the front of the controller where there's a screw eye. This allows the hand pull up to the mouth and you tie that off once the hands are sitting laying down so bring those down good and then that's the tension right there and you put a double knot on that that hand is designed to lift up to his nose so it looks like he's pulling the hand up to his mouth looks like he's blowing <laughs> So we're going to take the leg bar, and the leg bar has these two holes on each one of the ends. And there's a hole in the middle that goes right up to the top of the controller so it can be held in place. And we're going to take the needle and thread, and we're going to find where the leg is attached. So we pull the leg up and find the screw eye, because we're now going to attach the leg strings. Okay, so you can see that it's bent right there, and you take your needle and thread with the puppet string and push it through. Oh, the feet, we forgot to paint the feet and forgot to put felt on the bottom, but we'll do that through the magic of television. Oh, there's the screw eye, and we're going to place the string through the screw eye. You tie it off. Pull it through once, two, twice, make a grand knot, and then pull it down. And that tells you where the knee is, the movement. And we're going to then tighten at the ankle so it gathers very nicely there. You can cut off the excess later. See, so it looks like that. And then that string goes all the way up to the top of the controller, plus a little bit more. We cut it. And again, we go through the knot, the hole, and then back the other way, just like that. Take it to the top of the controller, and then we pull the string so there's just a little bit of tension to the leg. Good. And we tie it off. And now we're going to do the same with the other leg. Take the 
tube and place it right through the back of the controller where there's a holder. And now it's ready to perform. So now we're going to place the felt on the bottom of the shoes. And you'll find that you keep with a plastic bag and it has two pieces of felt. And we're going to take the foot and the contact cement and place it on the bottom of the foot. Just like that. And then we do the same with the piece of felt. And after you have it on both surfaces, on the felt and on the bottom of the shoe, you let it dry for about five minutes and then we place it onto the shoe and then do the same on the other foot. So we take the foot that has already the contact cement on it and the piece of felt that has it as well and you place it right on the surface pushing it down and you'll feel it starting to bond like that. And then you cut off the excess Take it along the area of the foot. And the reason why we put the felt on is it makes it so that when the puppet walks, it's quiet. It deadens the sound. And then you take your one other piece and do the heel the same way. Just like that. Okay. It's quiet. And then repeat it on the other foot. And now you've got your two feet covered like that. And so when they walk, it's nice and quiet. It's perfect. There's the collar. And it goes on just like that. Beautiful. And now let's show you how he performs. First, I put the tube in my mouth. Congratulations, you have just completed your balloon blowing clown. We're proud of you.